Hello there. Everyone remembers all the major powers in World War II. The blitzkrieging Germans, the suffering Soviets, and the steel-making, ice-cream ship-having Americans. But you know who I never hear mentioned? The Axis minor powers, like Hungary. Though a smaller country with a meager military, and led by an admiral despite not having a single ship, Hungary still contributed to the war. And I want to see just how much. So I'm going to take all Horthy, and using only completely historical divisions and presets in Hoi 4, see just how difficult it is to play the Axis Minor Hungary in World War II. Please Germany, save me. For more historical videos and challenges alike, why not subscribe? It's free, and every subscription makes Horthy's chin grow that little bit bigger. Okay, here we are. Hungary. We have our glorious leader, Horthy. Yeah, I, I might have enabled that mod. We start with the absolutely terrible Treaty of Trianon, which gives us minus 50% mill factory construction. I hate it. And just generally, we're incredibly limited. But that's okay, because as Hungary, our role is to play a miner and be the little baby boy of Germany. Our focus tree is a little boring, but it's also just filled with 70-day focuses, which is just agony. Well, sorry, the only thing we can do, build civvies, and I guess do secret rearmament, because we get a little bit of factory output. Might as well. Fairly standard research, and we're not really going to be training any divisions because we have no manpower whatsoever, and these divisions are crap. But it's okay, the eventual historical divisions we'll be making later are worse. Normally when I play these kind of historical videos, I get to spend the first few years carefully planning my economy to get ready for the historical divisions I get to make. However, my first historical divisions I have sources for begin in 1941, and I can't have an economy until then, so I get to spend some time reading a book. At least until I can do some fun things. I'm reading Nutmeg of Consolation, by Patrick O'Brien, by the way. Oh, don't worry, we can do every Weraboo's favorite focus. Strengthen the fascists. Oh boy. Weirdly, I can actually already go all the way to partial mobilization, which is pretty cool, even though I don't have any factories to really take advantage of this, but it's still cool. Oh wow, that focus was worth it. 0 0.01 daily fascism growth. Woo! Ooh, this just in with historical Hungary, a fourth research slot. Oh my god. I finally hit 40% fascist support, which means I can actually renounce the Treaty of Trianon. I'm not 100% sure how historical this is, but this is the only focus I can do that's not just like air or naval tech. I'm not even sure. Okay, Kingdom of Romania has folded that we have renounced the Treaty of Trianon. Now we can get going. Apparently they didn't just fold, they just didn't reply when we did it. <laughs> Hilarious. This means we are now Hungary. No longer Kingdom of. At least now we can finally go up to something more like volunteer only and try to get some real manpower in the field. This also means we can go all the way down to joining the Axis, but... I don't think I should do that, because isn't the whole point that I get made a puppet? I'm not sure, we'll leave that alone for now. At the very least, we can add a whole bunch of cores on Romania. Haven't made a vanilla game preset in a while, let's take a look at the light tank chassis, and it is the V3-4. The real tank had a 37mm gun along with two 8mm machine guns, so honestly this is pretty accurate with riveted armor and bogey suspension. I will just add the extra set of machine guns to make it a little bit more accurate, and this is the tank that I will make. Don't worry, I'm barely gonna get a chance to make any of these. Hungary did not have a lot of tanks, though we're also gonna be calling this the Ethan Shoop after a lovely patron. We can also go to limited conscription, though this does make us lose secret rearmament, so it's not as much manpower as I would like. You think more Hungarians would be willing to serve uh, Horthy? There's the Munich Agreement, and we have already run out of space in Hungary to actually build things, so I guess I'll just do some infrastructure until I can expand. It's 1938, which means I can actually make the first infantry designs, though these are actually border guards, and they're very weird. Sources state 3 to 5 battalions, but I'm adding one more to represent the additional manpower surrounding them, as well as having some mountain artillery brigades, pioneers, and also signal company. So the final division kind of looks like this. It is very, very weird. It's basically more of a brigade. The purpose was to guard the borders because they weren't allowed to have proper numbers of soldiers. So this is what we get. Oh, well, at least Germany likes the design. They have for some reason invited me to the Axis. I'm going to just turn that down because uh, it's not historical for me to join at this point, but nice of them to ask. First Vienna reward has happened, so we've gained Southern Slovakia. Oh my god, you know what this means? More building room. We can actually put some factories down, baby. And we can now demand Transylvania. Let's see if Romania is chill. Okay, I guess not. They have refused to give up Transylvania. Not very cool. We can go where and back off, or we can say, uh-uh, no, 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 gimme. Gonna put all of our troops on the border just to make them a little scared. Seems to be a bit of a problem, so we have to choose a mediator, and obviously we're gonna pick Germany. I mean, they like us, right? Yeah, there we go. Germany told them what to do. Romania has transferred all of Transylvania to us, giving us a huge amount of new territory that is all our cause. We've also got the Slovakia puppet created next to us. And, oh, oh god, I keep forgetting about this mod, look at that face. And we can claim overlordship of it through the focus tree by just asking Mr. Nice Mustache M Oh my god, look at him. Oh, the chiseled jaw. 
There's the war deck, but we're not going to be joining in to help Germany because, hey, Hungary didn't in real life. We are going to wait. After all, I wouldn't want to anger Stalin and the Jin. Okay, for some reason, Romania has joined the Axis. That's not fair. I want to join the club. Let me in. Oh, nice. Hitler read my mind. They've invited me anyway, so go on, we'll join. But I just won't take part in the festivities in Europe. I'll watch from the sidelines. Christ, I thought Stalin had the biggest chin. Look at this French boy. Well, the big chin didn't save him. Germany destroyed France very quickly. Now all we have to do is just keep getting ready, building mills, and preparing for 1941 division creation, where we get to fight Yugoslavia. Oh, and also we do get to take Slovakia from Germany to just sort of give it to us from a focus. Not sure why, but hey, a little puppet. I love it. We're also going to get a license from Germany for the Panzer II, because we had some Panzer IIs in our army. We couldn't be bothered to make our own tanks, so we might as well nick some from Germany. Speaking of tanks, we have to make our own tank, or more modern one, which is the Toldi tank. This is based on the Swedish Landsberg tank, and there are actually a whole variety of different ones. That's why there's so many different presets here with, like, all kinds of guns. But we're going to make the basic high-velocity cannon one, which is essentially meant to be the 37mm. Now, than that, it's pretty accurate. These other ones are not so much, but this is pretty good. Though it has to be a totally Ferkley after another lovely patron. Oh, dear God, Italy has already lost North Africa, and I can't help them because I promised I wouldn't join the war until historical times. Come on. Oh, okay, oh my god, so much for waiting until historical times. For some reason, Germany's declared war on Yugoslavia, like, five months too early. It's not 1941 yet, oh man. I guess I have to make my historical divisions right now so that I can help out in Yugoslavia, otherwise they're going to pour into me. I have some incredibly lovely sources, both in graph form and in written form for this infantry division. We have these same six infantry battalions in two regiments, but also two artillery battalions with a whole mess of different types of guns, all massively different caliber, but it all adds up to 30 pieces of artillery. So we can just simply use a regular artillery battalion. There are also 32 pieces of anti-tank split up amongst the entire division between the regiments and battalions, so we can just add one right to it. And there you go, along with the logistics company and the signal company. Oh, and there's also a cavalry company, so I think that's basically cavalry recon. There we go. This name is weird, though. We're going to call it HP Lovecats instead. We then have to make the cavalry and the motorized brigade, which are oddly different, yet quite similar. The cav has four battalions in two regiments, so we can just fix that quite easily by moving them around so that they're in two separate regiments. But it also has a bicycle infantry battalion, and if I were playing Black Ice, I could certainly include that, but for here I'm just going to have to use motorized infantry to replicate this. It actually has an armored reconnaissance battalion, which means it does actually have some tanks, and it also has a variety of artillery pieces in it. Totaling up to about 16, so we're just going to use the support company alongside the signals and the armored reconnaissance. As well as a decent amount of actual anti-air, so I can necessitate putting a support anti-air company there. Oh, and also 12 anti-tanks, so I'll use the support anti-tank company, and here we go, our cavalry. It's, it, it's odd. What's also odd is the motorized division. This is sort of what passes for an armored division for the Hungarian army, because while the motorized brigade is mostly motorized battalions, it does also have actual tanks. It has three dedicated motorized battalions, but it also has two bicycle battalions, which is what those two little dots mean. And I can't do that because I'm not playing Black Ice, so we're going to have to replace them with regular motorized. There's also about 60 tanks, which is enough to actually add a dedicated light tank battalion. So it's sort of like an armored division. And we're going to replace the armored recon with a regular motorized recon so as to not have too many tanks. So alongside some support artillery and anti-tank, as well as signals and maintenance, this is the division. It's sort of like an armored division, right? We're going to call the U511 after another lovely member. I think that's fitting. Please, let's hope it's not too terrible. And finally, there's just the 1941 Mountain Brigade, which is pretty similar to an infantry brigade, except it has one fewer battalions. It's just like a little bit weaker. And it still has roughly the same amount of actual artillery pieces as well as anti-tanks, so it gets a full complement of support pieces, but its actual strength is very weak. It looks like this. Definitely not a fan, but that's what we got to work with. Just going to convert my various little infantry divisions I've been training into these, as well as some of the mountains and some of each type, and then slap them all onto the Yugoslavian border in anticipation of getting ready to fight. We also need to be thinking about anti-tank, because I still never build enough. I have literally never once in my life built enough. Oh dear god, my crappy divisions are absolutely wiping the floor with Yugoslavia. I'm battle planning this and just falling into them. Wow. I did not think these weak-ass historical divisions would do so good. Oh man, and Chad Hitler's going to give me a whole bunch of equipment for all my work. Thanks, buddy. Damn, this is going pretty good for me. What, now even Italy is sending me stuff too? Everybody loves Hungary, what the hell? How charming is Horthy? 
Oh, and also, I really struggled to find sources for what kind of doctrines Hungary would do, so I think Grand Battle Plan is probably the smartest, you know, sort of an old-style combat, not really a lot of tanks, mostly about building trench lines and pushing. It seems reasonable to me. I'm also going to do the helpful Axis Minor thing and build up the transportation infrastructure, you know, get some railways together so when the invasion into the Soviet Union happens, we're actually ready. Come on, I'm useful. Oh, come on, I'm even encircling boys in the south and fighting Greece. Look at me, I'm even better than Italy. Although I did almost completely forget to prepare for Barbarossa, because it's going right now. I've got all my boys pulling over as fast as they can to get to the front lines. I'm going to try and help out with Romania at my own borders, and just sort of take care of the southern front. You know, Germany's going to deal with most of it. I've got some boys still fighting in Greece. I've pulled some off the line. But mostly, I'll be up north fighting the Soviets. Okay, we've finally been called in about time. Let's do it. We are already massively struggling for manpower, so I think we're going to have to go up to service by requirement just so we don't completely collapse. But, you know, it's going okay. A couple days in, we are pushing. I've also just noticed that not every German general gets the Chad treatment, but all the Soviets do. Why do all of my generals have the massive chins, but none of the Germans do? What the hell? I've been stuck on this damn river for like two weeks, but I think we're just now breaching it. My boys are not very strong. <laughs> Please just push. A little bit better. We are making some progress now. And the Germans are actually doing pretty good as well. And the Russians are pretty much collapsing. Hopefully we'll get close to Kiev. And there's the northern bit of the river that I think probably is going to stall us for months. Oh my god, but Britain is invading the southern tip of Italy. I think I need to send the boys that were fighting in Greece to go help them out. Because god knows the Italian AI isn't going to save themselves. We will save you, Italy. This is our role in life, to be a minor power and save the day. The Hungarians, I believe, did participate in the siege of Kiev, and it looks like we're going to be the ones to take it all on our own. The Germans aren't even there. There's very few Soviet divisions. I've got my boys all ready. And yes, America will be joining the war shortly, but come on, look at this. Oh, yeah, there they go. We are actually making progress. Yes, the fall of Kiev. How dare you? Germans can keep up the momentum. It was all me. It was all the Hungarians. Honestly, we have actually hit a little bit of a stalemate right now. We can't breach these rivers, and the Germans, I'm not pushing as aggressively as I would like. My smaller historical division's strength is really telling now. I just cannot push even weakened Soviet infantry because they're just bigger than me. They've got more battalions and more artillery. This hurts. Okay, okay, Germans are doing more. That's good, and maybe we can help with a bit of battle planning as well. Maybe we can just tire out the Soviets and make them run out of guns or something. Yes, look, full breakthrough of the river beyond Kiev has been achieved, and there are no Soviet divisions. Let's just pour in. We're going to be useful, okay? This is what we do as miners. We fill in gaps. Look at this. Cavalry moving down south from Poltava. We are going to encircle in Zaprovzi and take this giant chunk. We're going to make what every woman wishes their dresses would have. Pockets. And off the backs of that beautiful pocket and some good pushing, it's time to make our new divisions of 1942. And by that, I mean what can only be very generously described as an Hungarian armored division, because that's it. The only Hungarian tank division only has one armored regiment with two battalions in it with a whole hodgepodge of different lights and medium tanks. There's only barely about 120 tanks, so honestly, just a light and a medium tank battalion is the best I can get. But we can also have about three motorized infantry battalions, which is actually kind of decent. We have 24 pieces of artillery and 24 pieces of anti-tank as well, which can be replicated with one artillery battalion and a support anti-tank. There's also a variety of armored cars, so we'll put that as the recon company. It has about 12 AA guns, so we'll put that in there as well. And alongside a signal company and oddly an engineer company, and that is our tank division. It's not the worst thing ever, it's just kind of small. It'll do, honestly. We're also going to get a license from Germany for the Panzer III because the tank division is supposed to have a variety of Panzer III's alongside our own tanks. So might as well do that and start building them. We're also going to polish off this lovely little pocket. Look at that. That's so many divisions. I love it. We're going to get the kills for this. We are contributing. Okay, genuinely Stalingrad might be able to be taken. We've wiped out so many Soviet forces. There's just nothing in the southeast. The AI has not sent enough boys. Also time to build the main tank the Hungary constructed is the Turan II. This is actually based on a preset and the actual tank was very cool. There were several hundred made by the little nation of Hungary. It had either a 40 or 75 millimeter gun depending on the version, but since this is the Turan II for the preset, I think the medium cannon does actually make a lot of sense. The only change I'm going to make is I am going to add an extra set of machine guns because the tank did actually have more machine guns than this. And also it had a tank crew of five, so having a three-man turret makes perfect sense as well. I love it. Here it is, the Turan II. Crimea has fallen. Look at this. We are massively pushing. Maybe we can get a pocket around Moscow. Okay, yeah, there's literally no one on Stalingrad. Look at this. Goodbye, Soviet control. We're doing it. Come on, baby. Yes, the fall of Stalingrad. 
The real trick is going to be Moscow, but the tiles do indeed have defend Moscow, which gives them a timed bonus of defense. It's going to really hurt. So let's just abandon our push there and move our forces more east. See if we can take more exposed territory. Let the Germans do all the heavy stuff. What's kind of funny is that this was the historical plan. The main German force would push towards the center and the north, pushing into Moscow towards Leningrad, and the Hungarians, Romanians, and a few Italians would push east and south and try to provide more of an ancillary push. We've actually done it. It's just in this timeline, we did our jobs and didn't get bogged down outside Stalingrad. I can't say the same for Italy, though. They've completely abandoned Rome in defending their own ports, so I'm going to have to do it for them. My god. Also, let's be really good allies. We have a lot of spare guns. Let's give some to Germany. I have like 40,000 just sitting here because I just don't need them. Here you go, buddy. I have like 20,000 <laughs> crappy guns. Why not? Enjoy, Chatler. Back on the actual Russian front, we are attempting to try and cut the railway, connecting Moscow to the rest of everything. If we can take Kazan in that northern bit, I think we'll be able to completely destroy the Earls because they'll be utterly cut off from everything. So let's just try and focus on that. Send our few, like, motorized armored boys pushing north. I want that railway. The push is working. We're encircling things and actually contributing. Though Finland has just pieced out, which means all of the Soviet troops that are in the north are going to start cascading down to the south and probably halting the German assault to Moscow. That's going to suck. Oh dear god, look at Germany's stockpile. Why are they 50k guns in the hole? I've been providing them with tens of thousands and they're completely run out. Guys, use your stuff better. We have taken so much of the Soviet Union, nearly on our own, but without taking control of Moscow and retaking control of Leningrad, it's not going to be enough. But there's so many units here in the center. And oh god, I look away from Italy for two seconds, and they've lost Luca and Firenze, please. I've got my boys near Rome, so let's just, like, quickly move them around, try and knock this out of the park. And Leningrad has been retaken, though. I didn't even take part in that, so that's kind of cool. And we are closing in on Moscow, but, man, it's hard. We did, however, manage to cut the railway going eastwards towards the Urals, so all these boys are now going to be encircled by a supply. So I can either just push into this empty wasteland of nothingness, or try to send forces to help out around Moscow. I still need to think about Italy, of course, because even more troops have appeared through Livorno, and I'm really worried that Italy's going to collapse. Alright, I've settled on Moscow. Let's send the armored boys, quote-unquote, and see if we can push into Moscow. It's a little bit thinly held here. I can't believe it. Am I actually going to be the one to take Moscow? Am I going to save the day? This tiny little miner of Hungary is going to take Moscow, just like I took Stalingrad. We need to take some of the forces that are around Gorky because we're really suffering. And maybe, just maybe, can we do it with some armored boys? Okay, it's agony and I've almost completely encircled it. I'm just continuously attacking, losing many tens of thousands of loyal Hungarians. But I'm seeing green bubbles now and again. And there it is, baby. The Hungarians are the ones to take Moscow. Russia just needs a little bit more beating with a stick until it collapses, so I'll just try to take Gorky and any VPs I see. Literally just trying to overrun Gorky as fast as I can. I don't care about casualties at this point. I just want to help Papa Germany. I am a good, loyal friend. Yes, look at that. Oh, they had nothing left. Oh my god. <laughs> The Soviets were really suffering, but we have done it. We have invaded the Soviet Union and won. What can we take? What will Germany let us take for doing pretty much, let's be honest, the majority of the work? Behold, border gore! This is what Germany let us have. We've basically doubled the size of our country. It is glorious. We only have 5% war score contribution against the Allies, but hey, we got like most of Ukraine. They wouldn't let me have Crimea, but this is nice. This is nice. Screw you, Romania. And though the Soviet War is now done, I think we can do our very final design, which is the 1943 infantry design. The sources I have show that it's actually a pretty typical infantry division, albeit with support anti-tank rather than dedicated anti-tank, because it just had a few less guns, and a very typical nine infantry battalions with 36 artillery pieces. So yeah, it's a 9-1 pretty much with full support complement. This is actually now a normal infantry division. Thanks, HP Lovecats. You're normal. Oh dear god, we're at war with all of China for some reason. How did this happen? Might as well send my boys to go and help out against Xinjiang or something. We know, we're contributing, okay? We do whatever Papa Germany says. There's also a whole bunch of like mini D-Days cropping up again and again, so I'm just going to keep sending my forces from Italy and the reserve boys I've got near Hungary and move them to take care of these terrible little encirclements. That's what the miners do in multiplayer games, right? We defend the D-Day wall. 
Oh, hell, and Turkey's joined the Allies as well. Really bad decision on your part, buddy. Let's move some forces that we have in Italy to go and fight them from both flanks. Yeah, it's honestly a pretty easy one because they really don't have many divisions. And I'll use the few armor divisions I have to spearhead a push from Istanbul. And there we go off the Izmit Peninsula. You're going to die, Turkey. It's just a whole bunch of whack a mole little invasions now. There was one in Bordeaux I just slapped away. There was another one in Marseille. And the Italy one has now kind of bled to the west. Turkey's just completely collapsing. Like, they, there's no hope for them. Honestly, though, I think we can probably call it here. The Allies have now been wiped out from Italy and Turkey and all of Europe in general, the Axis is basically won. We've basically tripled our starting border size. We have succeeded in being historical Hungary and winning the war for our buddies. I've really enjoyed this, so if you'd like this as well, make sure you do leave a like and a comment down below, just in other new video series and challenges you'd like to see on the channel. And thank you again to all YouTube members and patrons who so graciously support this channel and keep it alive. Bye bye